What's going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about logging in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so let's talk about logging. I think logging is one of those things that people oftentimes don't want to do a little bit like testing uh, because it's a little bit boring. It's not the most fancy thing, not the most interesting thing that you can do uh, in coding, but it's one of those things that save you a lot of time and can help you tremendously if you need them. Now, you hope you won't need them, but if you need them, you have a lot of data to analyze. For example, let's say your program crashes or your service doesn't work anymore. You can look into the logs, into the past logs, into the current logs to see what is going on or what was going on, what caused the problem, what is the core of the problem and how can we find a solution. So logging is something uh, that is a long term investment. You want to log everything, especially if you have an application that's a little bit larger with uh, many different classes that are interconnected. You want to have the overview of what is happening. Um, and to some degree, we already do logging all the time when we write scripts, we constantly print messages that inform us about the state started to train the model model is now trained proceeding to the next step or maybe a warning this could go wrong because that component didn't load or this error happened or this component failed critically or maybe even even just a debug message that says the value of this variable at the moment is that. Um, so we do some logging all the time, but most of the time we just use print statements unless we're working on a, a professional large, uh, large scale project. But I want to show you today how you can do professional logging in Python using the logging module. And this is the go to way to do logging, you should not just be printing uh, messages all the time with a print function, you should not just open a with statement and uh, dump some information into files, you want to have professional log files, especially if you're working on a real project. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to import the logging module itself. It's just import logging part of the core Python stack. Um, and we can log right away with the logging module itself. So we can say logging dot log and then we can choose a security level. By the way, let's talk about the security levels real quick. We have five different security levels. The first one is debug, which is self explanatory used for debugging. Then we have info, then we have warning, then we have error. And then we have critical. Now, I think all of them are pretty self explanatory. But basically debug is the lowest level, which means that if you have your logging, um, if you have your logger on debug mode, you're going to see all the messages. If you have it on warning, you're going to see warning error critical. If you have it on critical, you will only see critical messages. So uh, it has this, you could say backward compatibility that if you have the lowest level, you're going to see everything. If you have info, you're going to see everything, uh, except for those below the level that you chose, right? So debug is just for debugging messages like this variable has this value at the moment. Info is more like informational, this component started this model is now trained. So just info that is not related to any problems. A warning is not a problem yet, but something that could go wrong because we have something that maybe you want to look at because maybe it will become an error or a critical message if you don't do anything about it. An error is something that went wrong, but it's not critical to the program. It's not like you uh, it's it's not like everything crashed and nothing's working anymore, but maybe some connection didn't work, some file was not found and so on. And critical is like a critical component failed, we need to stop or we need to do something right now because that is critical to the program. So those are the five levels and we can just provide one by saying logging lock and then logging dot and we can choose the level debug info warning, um, error and critical. So we can go ahead and say for example, uh, info, and then the message. Uh, this is our first logging message like that. So if we do that, I'm not sure if we're going to see it right away, because it depends on the logging level by default, we're not going to see all the messages because we have a default logging level that we have. If I change this to critical, we will see it because critical is the highest level. So there's no way we're not going to see any critical messages here. But as you saw, info is uh, not displayed by default. So if you want to change the basic config of the logging module, you need to say logging dot basic config. And then you need to set the level to whatever level you want, we're going to set it now to debug so that we see all the messages. So we're going to say logging dot debug like that. And if I now run this with the info again, we're going to see the info message as well. So we can change this to 
debug as well. We can change this to critical. We can change this one to warning. Warning, there you go. And you can see all of them are displayed. Now, if I change this to info, we will not see the debug message as you can see. So it's gone because debug is one level below info. So we're not, we're not displaying it. So this is one way to do logging. You just use the module right away and you use the log function. You can also use the module and say logging.info directly or logging.debug directly. Then you just have to provide the message, hello. So you can choose info, you can choose warning, warning. And you can choose critical, for example, and let's add error as well. So you can also do it like that if you want to. And the other method in which you can lock or uh, if you don't want to use the logging module itself, you can also create a logger. So we can say logger equals logging dot get logger. And then we have a named logger. So we can provide a name for this logger. Let's just call it neural logger like that. And now if we say a logger dot uh, info, for example, this is some information. Then you can see that I now have info and then neural logger as the logger name and then the message. Uh, by the way, one more thing that I want to mention is that sometimes this won't be enough. Uh, I don't know when exactly it's not going to be enough. Uh, I had some problems in the past. Sometimes you're not going to be able to set the level by just um, setting the basic config. In such a case, what you need to do is you need to say for handler in logging dot root dot handlers. And you want to remove all the handlers that we already have in the root logger. Now, probably for this video, we are, you're not going to need this, uh, need this. But if this for some reason doesn't work, and you cannot choose your security level manually, what you want to do is you want to remove all the handlers from the root logger and you can do it by just saying um, for handler in logging root handlers and then logging root dot remove handler handler like that. And then you want to set the basic config to info or whatever you want. Uh, just some side information here because I struggled with that uh, once already. All right, so we have this logger now and uh, we can we can proceed to just, you know, do the same thing here. We can say logger dot lock and provide a security level or we can say logger dot info logger dot critical and so on. But that's all the basic command line logging. The good thing about logging is that you can also uh, lock into files easily, you can just add a file handler to the logger and then you can log onto the command line and at the same time into files. So if you want to do that, you create the logger, and then you create the file handler. So we can say file handler equals logging dot file handler and uh, here we specify a file name we're just going to go with lock file dot log for now so nothing too fancy yet we're going to talk about that in a second how we should name the files uh, ideally so we're not going to stay with lock file dot lock um, and then what we do is we basically just say okay file handler dot set level because the file handler can have a level itself let's say for example onto the command line we want to print everything so let's set this to debug but I only want to lock into the uh, into the file handler into the file. I only want to lock all the messages that are warning or above. So I can say logging dot warning. So then I'm going to print everything onto the screen. I'm going to log everything into the command line here, but I will only log the warning messages, error messages and critical messages into the actual log file. And once I have the handler, I just say logger dot add handler and file handler like that. Then we can go ahead and lock some messages. Let's start with a debug message. Hey, I am debug. Some info message. Hey, I am info. And then some warning as well. There you go. So if I run this now, you will see that on the command line, I get all three of them. If I go into the just created log file, you can see that I only see, hey, I am warning. And you can also see that I only have uh, the message itself. I don't have any format like here. I don't have a security level. I don't have a name. I don't have any timestamp. I only have the pure message. And this is something that you want to change. But before we change that, let's talk a little bit about the file name that we should choose because the file name um, it should not just be log file .log because then you have one big log file and there's um, it's a little bit hard to 
look through all the logs if they're all in one log file. So what I like to do personally is I like to have different log files for every day. And how you can do that is you can just say in the beginning of the of the file, you can say import date time as DT. And then you can say today is DT date time dot today. So it gives you today's date. Um, and then you can craft a string. So you can say file name equals and then we can create an F string. And what we want to have is first want to have the month, the day and the year. So what we can do is we say today dot day, or actually we said month, right? Today dot month is the first thing. And I would like to add a formatting so that we have always two digits. So basically, if we have uh, 12, it's already going to be two digits 11 as well. But if we have nine, I don't want to have nine, I want to have zero nine. If I have two, I don't want to have two, I want to have zero two. And in order to get that formatting, we just have to say, colon zero to D. This is how we do that formatting. Then we can also say today dot day. And it's going to do the same thing zero to D and then the year which is today dot year here, I don't need any formatting and then dot lock in the end. So that is the file name. And this is what we're going to pass to the actual file handler here. So we're going to just pass file name. And then depending on the day you start this logger, it's going to have a different file name. So we can run this here. And you can see that I have this 08192021 log file because it's the 19th of August. 2021. And this is why the log file is named like that. If I run the same script tomorrow, I'm going to get a separate log file with 20 here instead of 19. All right, so let's get to the formatting, which is the final thing that we're going to talk about today. The formatting is very important because again, we don't want to see a log file like that where I just have some message like something went wrong. I don't even know the security level. I don't know when it happened. I don't know uh, which logger is writing this. So we want to change that. And for this, we have to create a formatter. So what we do is we say up here, formatter equals logging dot formatter. And to this formatter, we pass uh, a string describing the um, describing the format of the logging message. Now, I personally always have to look this up. So you can look into the documentation, or you can just copy it from this video. But the structure is the following for the timestamp that I want to have or for the logging structure that I want to have. First, a percent sign, then ASC time uh, in parentheses, followed by an S. This is basically the timestamp. So then we follow that up with a colon. Then we have percent and then level name, which is the keyword for uh, for the security level. And then we have uh, a dash and then we can go with message. So percent messages. So basically, you can't see what it's doing, you have a timestamp, then a colon, then the level name, then a dash and then the message, you can of course change these symbols here. But these things need to stay the same. These are just the keywords that we use to to get the certain things at the positions. These are like placeholders for the individual uh, pieces of information. And once we have that, we just say, actually, we need to do it before we add the handler, but after we have the handler. So we need to do it here, we need to create the file handler, and we need to create a formatter. And then we're going to say file handler dot set formatter, formatter, like that, and then we add the handler. So if we do this now, let's add some messages here. Add a error message here and a critical message. And of course, we change this to I am error and I am critical. And now if I run this, you can see here the format is the same because we only changed the format for the file handler. And inside of the log file, you can see that we have a timestamp, uh, even with a time, not not just the date with the time itself as well then the uh, security level and then the error message itself. So this is how you do professional logging, uh, you have to decide for yourself what you want to log how you want to log it. But uh, I would recommend whenever you have like something uh, like try and accept, for example, you try something, we're just going to add a pass here some code, and then you have accept and something goes wrong, I would always do logger dot error or 
you can also say logger.warning, there was a mistake, we fixed it, here's how we proceed, because except basically means that your script uh, encountered an error or exception, but we handled it. Uh, so it's actually no longer a problem. You can choose what you want to lock. You can also, if something fails critically, you can just say, okay, critical, we have to terminate the script and you need to do X, Y, and Z. You can lock info messages whenever you do something. So for example, when you train neural networks, you can say, okay, logger.info, the neural network is now starting to train. Then logger.info, the neural network is now trained. You can start with the next step and so on. Uh, it's always useful to have as much information as possible. And yeah, that is how you do logging in Python. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button, leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you next video and bye.